welcome to Knowing Jesus Week 33 Deep Dive, joined this week by Pastor Terry. Uh, Terry, how you doing? I'm doing great. Okay, you preached preach at Mid-Rivers this weekend? I'm at, yes, yeah, we, I love this. This is like something we don't usually talk about, so this is a really good topic. Yeah. And then Ben Powers? Yes. Uh, you were out at St. Charles. Yep. Yeah. Um, excited. How'd that go? Really good. Always fun. <laughs> Always fun to be out there. Yes. Awesome. We all like to travel around. We do like we to do. be at different campuses. We do. It's campuses. fun going to different It's one of the campuses. benefits and the joys that we have. Yeah. yeah. Going to St. Charles to get a chance to go to Grandma's Cookies. So It is right there. Yes, it is. Yeah. What's your go-to? <laughs> uh, the coconut. The coconut? coconut. Really? Yes. Oh, I okay. love that cookie. <laughs> How many of those do you think you've eaten? Uh, too many. Last... Way too many. But when I was, we, yeah, we always get a whole box of them. So. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, and my name is Brad. So we are excited for a conversation today as we continue in. We're post Easter, right? So Jesus, we've talked about his resurrection. We've talked about his ascension. This week we were talking about what is he up to now, right? As we wait for his coming back. And I think this is so important because often we end with either the cross, you know, the Jesus on the cross or the, the resurrection. He's kind of mysteriously gone. And, you know, it can leave us with the opinion. It's like, well, he's on vacation or he's resting or he's done the work or, you know, and we forget that he is right there. It's the same things he was doing mm-hmm. all throughout the series mm-hmm. we've been talking about is what he's doing mm-hmm. for us now. Yeah, I was over here and uh, Mike was recording uh, Rogue Table Talks. Yeah. And he used the illustration of we, we often... We act like Jesus is the parent who's gone away, and we have to, you know, get everything done before they come back. And that's that's probably a a poor illustration because, like, we have work to do, do. and Jesus is actively doing doing it work with us, partnering mm-hmm. with us. And that is, I mean, there Jesus tells the parable of the king, the ruler who goes away and leaves the three servants, and mm-hmm. so there is a sense we're responsible for that, but there is a partnership that's there. With them. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, in this, so for throughout this study, I've kind of looked at this book called Salvation um, Accomplished by the Sun by Robert Peterson, a uh, good old Presbyterian uh, professor of mine from <laughs> my time at yeah. Covenant. And uh, he, so in this book, he kind of identifies different saving actions, different saving events that Christ uh, has done, right? So, like his, his incarnation, his sinless life. Um, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, these classical kind of uh, events that when we think of the work that Jesus has done, our minds go to. Um, But he includes three uh, events uh, for kind of to describe what Jesus is up to now. Because that's a great question is, what is Jesus doing? And and the words he uses are uh, Jesus' session, right? He has been crowned as as king. It's the culmination of his work as prophet, priest, king. Um, He uses the word Pentecost, Right, because there is, you know, Acts chapter two, this day of Pentecost, when Jesus, even when he was with his disciples, before he left them, he said he would send his spirit, um, and then his his work of intercession, like he's constantly kind of at work right now, um, interceding for us to the Father, and so uh, those are kind of the, the the three kind of places my mind goes when I think of what Jesus is up to. But what do you guys? I know you guys you taught this weekend, like when you think about um, what the work of Christ, I guess, where does your mind go to? Well, that's, that's a great question. I know Ben and I have been chatting, like, it could be a whole series. That's what, you know, I think of everything uh, that he's doing, and there, there's so much uh, in there. And so, you know, that's partly what we tried to do this weekend is just give some highlights of all those things. Because I think wherever we are in our life today, we, we can sense that he's doing something. Maybe he is ruling. Like, it's like, okay, God, I just need you to take charge. Maybe he's defending us. We feel like we really need a defender. Maybe he's interceding for us. Maybe we're just in a season where he's wooing us and, and loving us. Or, you know, we're partnering with him to build the church. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think we ended with that because we really want to talk about the fact that we're partnering with him. If you want to be where Jesus is, building the church mm. is one of those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great um, it, it's a great picture of just how God uses us, that he's never really finished with us. Mm-hmm. I mean, no matter um, what stage or season that we're in. And for Jesus, it's, yeah, he had his earthly ministry, but then he also, his heavenly ministry, and there's there's more for him to do. There's purpose um, with it. And um, th- when I was thinking this past week, the one kind of, I guess, illustration I kept thinking of was a parent 
as you know, I always thought of parenting as once your kids are out of the house, then you're done. You're retired. You hmm. kind of move on. How's that going? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm getting there. Uh, so I have a 17 and a 13 year old. So, but um, but everybody keeps telling me you're never really done as a parent, and so you're always a parent. And that makes sense when I think of my parents. Yeah, they're still involved in my life as a parent, as a father, as a mother. So I think when Jesus moves on, it's the same kind of concept. Like, you're never really finished. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's good. Well, I want to kind of, there's one passage I do want to look at. It's a, a verse um, where Jesus, he quotes Psalm 110. So we're going to look at Psalm 110 specifically. Uh, the reason I want to I want to highlight this is because. Uh, he seemed to have conversations in, you know, at least all the, the synoptic gospels where the Pharisees were asking him about the meaning of of this. And he kind of, it's one of the few times he speaks about what he will kind of be doing um, when he, you know, goes on. And so Psalm 110, verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So uh, what do we... <laughs> the Lord says to my Lord. Yes, who, yes. Who are they? And, and yeah. the first Lord, all capitalized second lord not yes right so there's some some syntax there but right and they always there's always usually an an immediate application to that but but using this with jesus yeah jesus has ascended he's won the right to sit at the father's side and he is doing that you know god and god together yeah. i mean this is kind of the incredible thing what jesus is doing it's god speaking to god mm-hmm. uh, god praying to god what does that need and that Jesus is ruling. He's seated on the throne. He's in charge. And I, I, I think as we even talked at the session the week before, the now and the not yet, you know, that he is really in charge, although we don't always see everything. Satan still has some reign um, under uh, the parameters that God has, mm-hmm. but that we will really at one point see Jesus fully mm-hmm. in charge. But he's ruling. Jesus is next to God ruling. Mm-hmm. What would his followers have? How would they have interpreted this? Like, what would Peter and John and like all like what would they have been thinking that Jesus was up to when he left and went to heaven? Well, he told them, "I'm preparing a place." Mm-hmm. Right? He told them, "I'm going to do that." Um, you know, I think uh, he's sending his spirit. Right? He's going to be doing that, sending his spirit, who's there. You know, that he's gifting and preparing the church, and he's building. The church. I don't. It would be interesting to see what. I, it's a great question. What they immediately thought? Did they see Jesus interceding? We see that more in Hebrews and in Paul's mm-hmm. uh, letters. Um, uh, Stephen, you know, has a vision of Jesus in heaven, kind of there, encouraging him, uh, seeing that. You know, so I think there's probably the sense from Stephen's picture that that Jesus is standing there working advocating encouraging helping us on our behalf they I think would have seen that aspect of Jesus as the advocate that way mm-hmm. I, I, always, don't know. I always thought of it as like Jesus would always say these things and then it it I don't think it registered but then it <laughs> happened and then they're like oh, oh probably yeah oh he did say that or it took them a while to catch up I mean there are just so many unreal things mm-hmm. that happen and mm-hmm. um, so I think I think it probably it took a while to catch up to mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. And we have so much. I mean, there's enough. The scriptures give us enough of what Jesus said. I'm sure there is way more conversation sure. that they had yeah. that we have yeah. no uh, no record, you know, record of what that is and yeah. maybe filling in some of those gaps. Yeah, so when we think of his session, right, him sitting at the right hand of the Father, um, it's described as this is kind of the culmination of his work, the offices that were started as baptism, the prophet, priest, and king. What, what do we... What does that mean? I guess, like, let's just go through those. Prophet, priest, king, those are three kind of classical understandings of, of what Jesus does, what his responsibilities are, um, kind of what some of the work that he does is. Like, I guess, what, lead us, take us through those. Like, prophet, priest, and king. Yeah, it was the, th- you know, three roles that God, God has in our life, Jesus has in our life, you know, that, um, you know, he's the king. That's obvious that he's in charge, he's ruling. He's the priest. It's kind of the intermediary between us and and God. And this is what, you know, we read in Hebrews. Paul says that he's he lives to intercede. I love the way Paul says, mm-hmm. you know, he lives to intercede, to speak on our behalf, pray on our behalf. I I, I think we were clear. We didn't want it to look like God just all, always thinks the worst of us, mm-hmm. and you know, Jesus is kind of defending us. 
And then the prophet that he's speaking, he's acting on behalf of God, he's sharing the word of God, he's working, he's sending his Holy Spirit, he's building the, the church, he's kind of doing that work on behalf of God. That's what a prophet was, someone who speaks mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ben? Yeah, no, um, I mean, yeah, I agree with all of that. I think um, just going back to the, the psalm text, I think it is a great picture of the Trinity. And we have some of these classic um, passages of creation where you have the, the spirit that's hovering, and, um, you know, First John talks about the word was at the beginning. You have Jesus' baptism where you see all three, but then here is another instance of the Trinity. And I think, man, I just think it's a great picture of yeah. three, you know, th um, three persons, one God. There's a, there's a work that's being done. All three of them have different roles, responsibilities y within that. Um, yeah, and I think we get pictures of, you know, we get Jesus' earthly ministry was, it just, it seemed like, you know, maybe he was in the forefront um, more than the this father. This is clearly the, spirit. the work of the son right yeah. here. Yes. But, but I think there was the work of the spirit and the work of the father going on at the same time equal. And then you have the spirit after Jesus leaves, but it's still Jesus is in heaven and he's still working. And I just think, yeah, we they're probably 100% all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a great picture. Yeah. So. Well, I want to come back to that um, because kind of that next event, we talked about like the day of Pentecost and him sending of his spirit. Before we get that, Psalm 110, it, it continues. And there's this tricky little little phrase. You might have seen me underline it here. Um, here we see it picked up again in, in Hebrews. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, who do I want to ask this of? Yeah. Ben, <laughs> what, Terry. Is, what, no, Terry. <laughs> what does it mean that Jesus is a priest in the order of Melchizedek? Um, that I don't know. I think Terry would have better a better guess than I would. <laughs> Well, it does seem to describe different priesthood in there. You have kind of the the Samuel, particular as as a priest, kind of that person who runs intermediary between God in particular style of worship. Melchizedek um, was the person that Abraham yeah. connected with and was there, and it seems to be like of it's a, a different Israel order, of a of a larger spiritual order that's a little broader and outside of the traditional. Mm -hmm. Um, rituals and, and activities, and so that, sh and you know, there's some sense of was uh, you know Melchizedek even kind of a picture of Jesus or a mm -hmm. pre-incarnate aspect of Jesus, but that there's this um, it's perpetual it's a priesthood, to it. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a priesthood that's a larger and greater yeah. and more pervasive than what was there before, what, than what came to follow with yeah. the, the temple worship. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, there, there is just something different about the the priesthood of Melchizedek. Um, that's probably as in depth as we can. Yeah, <laughs> really, it's all encompassing. Yeah, that it's a there's just yeah. you know the sense that's just God. That you know there was a sense with Melchizedek. Who is there? That mm -hmm. God was there. You know, Abraham seemed to you know give tithes to him, paid uh, like almost worship. It's a sense that that is, is yeah. God himself. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think the work that Jesus does in those offices of prophet, priest, and king, a lot of times, as I think you alluded to earlier, uh, the the work of Christ is limited to his his death and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we attach the ascension to it. And then it just kind of is like dot, dot, dot. Right. And then yeah. we, next week we're going to talk about second coming, right? And yeah. so, you know, sorry, you know what's interesting is I read this book um, by Randy Alcorn, Heaven, and he's his, and this is just a practical theory. Like he just says, in most seminaries, by the time they get to the end of that of Jesus after Je you know Jesus resurrection, it's kind of they run out of time for the end time stuff. Yeah, they run out just practical yeah. time, so it doesn't get taught much. Yeah, in seminary. So well, and it's like um, I had a, a history teacher in like high school, mm -hmm. and we were going through it was a, like an AP Western Civ kind of type class. And she kind of said, like, yeah, you know how the semester goes? You get to the, the end of the yeah. semester, and it's like you have to do the last 50 years of American history <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in, like, a, two days. days. Yeah. So she actually went backwards. And, and oh, she would wow. So it was kind of odd. It was, it was kind of weird. Mm. I didn't love it, but she's a good teacher, so it worked. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a fascinating thing is it's oftentimes that mm. this 2,000 years of church history that Jesus is actively sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's doing work, mm -hmm. we don't – it doesn't really get talked about a whole lot in our systematic you know, class. Yeah, and there's something, you know, I think some of the things Jesus taught we can take di too far, like the idea of the the ruler who gone away went away and left his servants mm -hmm. to invest 
thing, you know, it, Hebrews talks about, and Jesus sat down. There's a picture of sitting and rest. That Jesus is the Sabbath rest. Mm-hmm. There's a sense of rest. And obviously, God rested on the seventh day, but there's work mm-hmm. after that. And I, I think, hopefully, through knowing Jesus, what we've been through the last eight months, Jesus is no different today than he was then. Mm-hmm. And the same things that he's doing, you know, I think the way that he advocated for people, you know, the woman caught in adultery, the, the woman at the well, the way that he advocated mm-hmm. for is, is what he's doing now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going to the Father, he's going to us, he's working on our behalf, saying, no, no, you, this is what this person is. You know, I love the story of, P- of Peter and Jesus saying, Peter, I prayed for you. You know, mm-hmm. Satan wants to sift you, but I prayed. Like, what would that have been like mm. for Peter to know, man, Jesus has been praying for me. Yeah. And he's doing that. You know, mm-hmm. Paul says he lives for intercession. You know, you know, he's, Ephesians talks about he's, you know, preparing his bride. You know, that he's wooing and preparing mm-hmm. his bride. You see Jesus reaching out and caring and wanting the the best for people. So, you know, I think what Jesus has done recorded in scripture is what he's still doing for us and that's what do we need him to do? Mm-hmm. Can we rest in that? Can we participate? If he's wooing us, are what are we doing in response mm-hmm. and return? And that's a challenge for us as guys, I think in particular, but how is he wooing us? if he's building you his don't, church? You don't like to be wooed. I, well, I do, I do like to be wooed, but, <laughs> but I know it's a mental, yeah, you know, it's it an it odd is. thing. It's a yeah. mental, um, and he's building his church. And sometimes people go, well, where's Jesus? I want Jesus, you know, why isn't God doing things? Well, are you joining what he's doing? Yeah. Like he's building, if you want to be where he is, don't, don't be off building your own kingdom. He's building the church. Well, some people say, why doesn't he just come back right now? Because yeah. well, he's still building this church. He's still, there's people they still right. have to save and bring into his church. There's work to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To do. And I think that's, you know, after knowing Jesus in a couple of weeks, that's part of what we want to just encourage people to be about. Are we really involved in kingdom business? Mm-hmm. What's what's he doing? What's he passionate about? We're so uh, connected in building other things instead of what mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. he's doing. Yeah. And, but he's wooing us to do that. He's praying for us. He's advocate he's in he's in charge we don't have to be in charge he's in charge that's so good and that's and i think that that's what we see in the book of acts right like uh if the gospels tell us ff bruce if the gospels tell the story of what jesus did and taught and um acts tells us of what jesus continues to do through the work of his apostles um through the the sending of his spirit and you know we didn't you know our our reading plan for knowing jesus ended (laughs) yeah uh last week because the reading for this week would have been the rest of the New Testament. Testament. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, so, so we do see this second kind of event, right? This Pentecost event, uh, Acts. Uh, in Acts, you know, we see Jesus sends the Spirit. Uh, in John, he told his disciples he was going to send uh, the Spirit. He said, actually, before he sent it, he said, hey, don't, don't do anything yet. Don't go anywhere. Um, the Spirit is going to come on you. And uh, so I want to hit this a little bit because, like, we have an opportunity to talk a little bit about the Trinity. And so what I guess, what, how do we understand the Trinity? Uh, can we understand the Trinity? How do we think about the Trinity? What, um, what is Jesus' role even in, in sending the Spirit? So, Ben, I asked you Melchizedek, <laughs> so let's ask you Trinity as well. Yeah. You, I, went, you went to yeah, Trinity. I went, went to Trinity. <laughs> I, went to, I went there. Uh, you would think I'd have a, the best answer ever. I mean, um, we always teach this in our core class because it's, um, as part of what we teach in a commit as far as who God is. And yeah, I mean, I think we just see these different, we, we see that these persons acted out in the Bible mm-hmm. and they're acting in their roles and the Bible tells us these are true. Um, but yet they're also one. And so we just can't, we just can't put that together. Mm-hmm. And, um, I always tell people like, that's, that's okay. It's okay that we can't put everything together. If we could, then, and we could figure God out would he even be worth worshiping? Mm-hmm. Is there a mystery to him? Is there there's some sense of mystery that um, woos us, you might say, to, to God. Terry might to, say. Terry might say. Uh, to kind of to want to worship him, to say, hey, this is something that's beyond myself, beyond my understanding. Um, that shouldn't threaten us. It should, it should le- lead us into um, a sense of discovery and worship. I think that's exactly it. I mean, that's the mystery we're invited 
into. I, I think that's one of the great challenges of this passage. We can't understand it. I want to know it. I want to apply it. I think the Trinity, it, 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 it's, it's one of the things you understand, but you don't. And it's a, you know, it seems like a logical contradiction. Mm -hmm. I say it's a mystery how three can be one together. That And every kind of illustration that you have to try to describe the Trinity seems to fall it apart yeah. at some point. But, you know, Jesus was very clear. I did what the Father told me to do. I mm -hmm. spoke what he sp told me to speak. I, you know, and then he said, you know, I finished the work. How many of us would love to do that? Like, I really am finished everything that I wanted to do. And then he's very clear. I'm sending mm -hmm. the Spirit. So there's a, an equality among mm -hmm. them, the Trinity, but there's uh, a work that they're doing. And, you know, that he, I think this is, how is Jesus at work doing that today? Pentecost was one event. The Holy Spirit was ushered in, the church grew, but Jesus, he's still is giving gifts. He's still equipping us. He's still preparing us. And I, I think, you know, we talk about spiritual gifts and encouraging people to mm -hmm. use their gift. And I think there are times where, you know, there are gifts that we have that we kind of generally operate in. And then there are other times that God just gives us a gift for the moment. And I think that's part of it, you know, that he gives us a, a gift that we need for, mm -hmm. for the moment. Mm -hmm. I think too, that, I mean, this is, this is all throughout Christianity. This is all through our faith. Like, you know, Jesus is man and he's God and they're both true. They both, how can that be? You know, um, the mystery of, the mystery it. of yeah. it. Um, it, it, you know, we have free will. God is sovereign over everything. How can there be two of those together? And it just is. And somehow in the midst of it all, it, it, you know, works out. God moves and works in it, even though it seems a little bit fuzzy to us. Yeah, it's kind of that Eastern, like, philosophy of, like, mystery reveals profound truth that we, mm -hmm. you know, whereas Western, um, mystery is something to be solved and to yeah. be understood, and yeah. once we do that, then we find that it's it's uh -huh. true. I think it's, is it theosis, the that idea of, I think Donald Fairburn talks about um, one of the fundamental ways that we experience the Trinity is we're invited into the relationship of the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. The Trinity is a relational, um, it's a relationship between the three persons um, who, who are God, right? Father, mm -hmm. Son, Holy Spirit. And yet um, there's just this profound mystery in terms of like what that even looks like for us to be part of that. And so that's great. Well, hey, for the sake of time, uh, now that we've fully, you and know. I do, you know, when we talk about inter, well, I guess you're going into Yeah, yeah, session. going so into let me tell you, you got that next. Yeah, well, yeah. I was going to say, for the sake of time, you know, now that we've fully, you know, mastered the Trinity. Uh, so intercession, <laughs> right? That third kind of uh, movement, that third saving event, what Christ is doing. We've, we've hit on it a little bit already, um, that Christ is at work interceding, um, interceding to to God on our behalf, to the Father. Um and so, yeah, I guess, yeah, where do you, where do you want yeah, to Yeah, I was going to say, well, in, in connection with the Trinity in, in doing that, that to really understand intercession and an intercessor, someone who's a go-between, who speaks between, identifies with the person. Mm -hmm. And there's this real sense of being able to identify, which is why Jesus, you know, talks about that he became like us. He identifies with our weakness. He knows what it's like to be tempted. And, and, and so in, in the mystery of the Trinity and speaking, again, you know, Jesus, you know, talks about the Holy Spirit praying on our behalf, as Paul does in Romans. Uh, Paul writes about Jesus living to intercede, speaking to the Father on our behalf, and that Jesus understands, like that he, in this way of mystery, is stepping even into our life today, and he's understanding where we're at. Like, sometimes I think that's hard. We think, oh, God's so distant. He's so far away. No, Jesus somehow, when he's with us through his Spirit, He's identifying with our grief, our loss, our pain, our sorrow, our guilt. He, he can go to the Father authentically mm. uh, and, and say, I know what they're going through, Father, and I yeah. you know, strengthen, empower, help them heal whatever mm. needs to be done. I, I think, too, when we um, – sometimes we might feel like, you know, God is so distant. Is God going to help me? I, you know, what's, can, can, I, can I make it? Is he, is he there? Is he working in my life? And I think once when we talk about some of this stuff and we pull the curtain back and we see what's mm -hmm. happening behind the scenes, mm -hmm. it is um, it is just so much resources from God mm. that he gives to us. And I mean, he sends Jesus to to die for us, and that's our, our salvation. 
Um, then he sends the Holy Spirit, and then we see Jesus in heaven, who's interceding, advocating for us, preparing a place for us, and we have, you know, he sent us the church, some, you know, people that we can connect to, he's given us the Bible, the, you know, place where we can receive truth. It's it's just above and beyond God pouring out, hey, I, I'm not against you, I'm really for you, and I really want you to make it. And I think what Terry said, too, is I think Jesus understands this world, it's broken, it's sinful, um, how much do we need all of these things? We need we need them, and um, and God's there to just give them give them to us because He really wants us to make it. And I wish I felt that every moment. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think you wish you could kind of live with that presence, and part of it is I think practicing the presence of Jesus is just being mindful, which is why we gave people those air fresheners. You know yeah. that when you get in the car, it's like where is God at work? You know the verse in Acts that God's always kind of working and moving, you know, part of it is practicing the present. And, you know, there are times God seems distant. There are times, Jesus, uh, Jesus, where are you? And then every once in a while, there's this moment where, okay, I, Jesus is working on my behalf. He's helping me. He's giving me something that I need. So it's it's a wonderful, yeah, it, you know, and again, that's a faith. It's a, he invites us into a mystery of faith. It's not like, oh, I know all this is going to I have to trust and believe and enter in and reach out. Yeah, it's not like Jesus is just going on vacation, right? right. He's, he is just as much at work now as he was when he was uh, walking and talking amongst his followers, amongst his people. And he is, yeah, he is interceding on on our behalf to the Father. Right. And so... Um, and there's sometimes yeah. he says, come away with me and have some rest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, there's some which yeah. he did with, just come away. And let's have some, re- you know, uh, you know, my yoke is easy. The burden's going to be light. Just come away. And sometimes it's like, hey, let's dig in and do something. We're, we've got work to do. we got a short amount of time to do that. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Well, next week, we're going to... The final week. His the final, the week. final week. Are we doing something special? Uh, yeah, we should have had... Like we- I mean, we're starting a new series. Actually. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. kind of special. That's special. Um, yeah, we so gave out candy and air freshers. There's that much that, more yeah, for that us to true. give yeah, away. That's true. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, next week we're going to be looking at uh, his his return, return. Uh, the mm-hmm. second coming, and so I know we will have plenty to talk about. There'll um, be a lot to talk about as, as well. There um, again, it, we hope that these conversations have been beneficial for you. Um, hope that they're a, a way that can just stretch your mind, stretch your heart a little bit more. Um, Hope you can join us again next week. You can find all of these discussions and more on our website, calvary.church slash knowingjesus. Uh, There's lots of resources there uh, for you, and uh, we look forward to catching you again next week. Thank you.